So today let's explore what's inside of a tankless water heater. Also called instant news on demand or continuous flow water heater. It's basically a type of water heater with no tank, no water storage. It heats the water as it's passing through it. The cold water just goes in here and the hot one comes out here. Here's the back of it. And it comes partially pre-disassembled. But now let's explore it a bit closer. Here's the label of it. Appliance must be earthed or grounded. And there's a very good reason for this. And there's no tank in it. The total volume of it seems to be just 0.1 liters. The maximum pressure 1 megapascal. And it can use 200, 220, 30 or 40 volts. AC 50 or 60 hertz. And various powers for various voltages. Here the voltage is 230 volts. So it's going to be about 3.5 kilowatts. A bit over 15 amps. And of course it's a resistive load, so the current is the voltage divided by the resistance and the power is the current times the voltage. Which means the current goes up linearly with the voltage and the power goes up with the square of the voltage. Let's try to put it in my calculator and this calculation Ohm's law with power calculates the current from the voltage and power and also the resistance of the heater about 15 ohms. Of course the numbers on the label are rounded, there is some rounding error, but it's about right. Now instead of entering the voltage and power, let's enter the voltage and current. And for example 200 volts from the label. It says 13.3 amps. And it again gives about the right power. And again about 15 ohms resistance of the heater. And it says the resistivity of water has to be higher than some value. Which also has a good reason for it. It was donated so big thanks for the donation. But now of course let's take a look inside of it. Let's remove this sticky tape. The screws are already removed. This comes off. That's it. All the screws and part here. And here is the heater. And its control board and some mechanisms here. The main cable comes in here with the ground. Here seems to be some setting for the temperature. Some switches. Some overheat protections probably. And this is also pretty assembled. You say some transistor triac or something switching the heater element in it. This is also pre-disassembled. It's also using the water to cool this one. And the water basically flows through these channels. This of course was mounted on it using multiple screws and there was a seal. And the same thing on the other side. There was the other cover with multiple channels going several times one way and the other. And the other seal and some more screws. And these covers have the connections between the channels. So it loops multiple times. And the heater is only in two of these channels. The other channels are empty. And why the channels are actually there? I guess it's to make the path of the water longer. And why is that? Because the heater is actually a bare resistive wire, heater wire connected to mains voltage. And it's not isolated from the water. Yes, a wire with mains voltage in it is straight in the water. And that's why it says it has to be grounded and the resistivity of the water has to be at least a certain value. So that the water has enough resistance and the electric current going through it is low enough. I guess the water goes in, makes several loops, so the resistance between the inlet and the heater is enough and then it makes several more loops and then it goes to the outlet and again the loops are to make the resistance from the heater to the outlet high enough. And then of course the inlet and the outlet is grounded using this wire. And it seems to be using 1.5 square millimeter cable to it with this European plug. My friend gave it to me and he says the only problem in it is that these seals are broken. There's a broken piece here and he asked them whether they actually supply these seals as a spare part. And he replied they don't. You can't buy these seals apparently as a spare part. So basically when this stupid piece of rubber fails you have to buy an entire new heater. One seems to be completely broken, the other one is actually also a bit damaged here. So this is not going to work. And the ground seems to go just to the inlet and outlet. It doesn't go anywhere else, it seems. The life in the neutral go first to this. Is it some overheat protection? And this thing basically switches both life and neutral. It might be what normally turns it on, but I guess it's just a protection. The last resort if something goes wrong and normally it's switched by something else. I guess here's a plunger. Maybe the pressure of the water 
actually switches this it's off normally and it's on when this is pressed and the leaf in the neutral goes through this first then both go through this thing and then one of these terminals goes straight to the heater and the other one probably goes through the triac for regulation so it doesn't just switch on and off it can regulate the power to heat the water to the selected temperature and here's this connector going to the temperature sensor and TC it says here let's just verify this thing is normally on and this is normally off the neutral goes straight to the heater from this switch and the live goes through the triac through the other end of the heater it's basically two heaters, two spirals in a series and on the other side they are just interconnected here and the heaters really are just spirals of a bare resistive wire with no insulation and they are straight in the water Let's try to further open it. This is probably the overheat protection. It comes out. Or is it overpressure protection? It actually seems it's overpressure protection. Let's try to push on this and measure. And now it's turned off. Can it be reset somehow? If I push here, it can be reset. Now let's remove this thing. I guess this spring has to be taken off now to access this screw. Now this comes off. And one more screw. And there should be some membrane, I guess. And that's it. The water comes from here, it goes in through here and pushes on the membrane from this side and it actually pushes it this way and pulls this shaft in and this turns it on. What's under this? It looks like a check valve, a one-way valve so the water can't flow backwards. If the water flows the right direction it pushes this thing out of the way but if it flows back this basically blocks the way but it's actually even more convoluted because there is some interaction between this membrane and this check valve it has a pin here and I guess it limits the flow if there is too much water flow this membrane can actually push this pin in and partially close the check valve limiting the flow and now of course the schematic of it the water goes in here through a grounded metal section and a protective mesh and it continues into several loops but before and after the loops it also goes into this membrane chamber and the membrane operates the switch turning the heater on it's only when the membrane reflects this direction and when the water is flowing there would be already probably a bit higher pressure before the loops than after them but to amplify the pressure differential during the flow and there is actually a restriction, a narrower section and based on Bernoulli's principle the faster the flow the lower the pressure the total energy in the water remains constant so if it flows faster and has a higher kinetic energy it has to have a lower potential energy and thus a lower pressure here and because there is a higher pressure here and a lower pressure here it moves the membrane in this direction and then it continues into the heater the first half of it and the second half and between these halves there's the check valve and after going through the heater the water gets to this NTC thermistor temperature probe and then several more loops and then it goes out through a grounded metal section but on top of this all it seems that when the membrane deflects too much in this direction it will push this check valve partially closed so the water flow doesn't exceed a certain limit and now the electric part of it this is a triac with an insulated tab 800 volts 40 amps and a 50 milliamp gate 
and with some big diode or I was trying to remove the board to see it better and this contact came off this nut will come off this contact this big screw and then I can remove the entire board and that's it and a closer look at it. This thing is not a diode, it's a 470 volt metal oxide resistor protecting the triac against over voltage spikes. And the triac is switched by this opto triac, 300 milliamp, 800 volt opto isolated triac. And this opto triac basically switches the gate of the big triac. And then there are two big film capacitors, both of them 608 nano, 305 and 310 volt AC, but for some reason each of them different. One is connected straight to mains as an interference suppressor and the other one is a part of a capacitive dropper power supply for the microcontroller. The capacitor has some inrush resistor in a series, some parallel discharging resistors, a bridge rectifier and this drops the voltage and rectifies it and produces a voltage for the microcontroller. And there is probably some limiting zener and then it goes into this 5 volt low dropout voltage regulator. There is a capacitor before the regulator, the capacitor after the regulator. Here is the microcontroller and the potentiometer to set the temperature, three indication LEDs it seems, some small resistors and capacitors around the microcontroller. Here is the input from the NTC thermistor, the potentiometer to set the temperature has this dial on it. And of course a closer look at the microcontroller and here is the regulator, the potentiometer, the capacitors, the LEDs. And here is the power section with the opto triac and this metal oxide varistor. And that's basically it. There is no voltage going into the board when the water is not flowing because these contacts are off. And when the water is flowing it brings the mainest voltage into this board. Neutral going straight into the heater and live going into the heater through the triac. And the circuit regulates the phase angle of the triac based on the temperature the NTC thermistor is sensing. And the sensor. And of course the logic testing time cannot be missing connecting a lamp instead of the heater and let's see. And the lamp is getting dimmer as it heated the probe and now it's pulsing. And when it's away from the lamp it goes back to full brightness. And some dodgy oscilloscope measurements. It's actually not regulating the phase angle, it's just omitting cycles. <sighs> Cooling down and more and more cycles are passed. Your lights must be nicely flickering if you have high impedance wiring. And the resistance of the heater really is 15 ohms as I calculated. So that's this tankless water heater, which would be still usable if you could buy spare seals for it. That's it and if you like my videos please consider subscribing, using the thanks button or supporting my channel on Patreon proportionally to the value you received from my videos. And big thanks to all of you who already support me. You keep this channel running.